What's up people, welcome back to Rebranding Safety Podcast on YouTube and on all the other platforms, wherever you're listening, I hope you're having a great day. This week we're talking all about a career in health and safety, how desperately health and safety is in the need of youth and diversity and we're talking all about it with Rachel. Rachel Butler is a little bit famous in the health and safety industry and we're going to tell you why in the podcast. Let's go. Like pretty much throughout my career I've always been like the, the youngest in the room. Um, so this kind of episode of like youth in safety is pretty, something I'm massively passionate about. But I suppose the question that needs to be asked: Where do you find an expert in youth in safety? Um, well, our guest today is um, is renowned and a little bit famous within the industry for being the youngest female chartered <laughs> member. Of my off. Um, so Rachel, welcome to the podcast. Um, do you want do you want to start by just kind of taking the listeners through your your journey to that that kind of famous? pedestal that you're on at the moment <laughs> pedestal. oh no um yeah first of all thanks so much for having me um i've listened to your show i uh, think it's great refreshing um and obviously thanks to all your listeners to, for hearing me out as well not quite sure about famous james but um if we're promoting health and safety positively then then that is a bonus and i'll take that um so yeah like you say one of the um uh, well i think the youngest chartered female uh, back in 2016 which was um, a journey in itself uh, but basically uh, I see myself as, as a minority of the percentage of women uh, in construction under the age of 30 but not only that but in health and safety as well so um, yeah as you can imagine there's been a few challenges along the way but nonetheless very re- rewarding um, and I just want to thank you again for the platform and the opportunity to be able to um, share that new story with people in a bit of a different light um, and hopefully try and encourage people who are thinking about joining the industry um, or even having a bit of a career switch into health and safety and um, the younger minority as well. So thanks for that. That's all right, welcome. It's a funny old subject, youth and safety, right? And I, and it, I know we had a, quite a long chat over email and LinkedIn and stuff like. How do we actually kind of pull out what we want to talk about? Because you know, we we could have I could have said, oh, do you know what, Rachel, come on and talk about construction because that's something we haven't really covered yet. Um, and and I thought, you know what, and I can't miss the the opportunity of having like like you say, you know, someone who's kind of doubled down on 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 being the the opposite percentage you know a woman in construction is going to be hard anyway and then and then the youngest woman and the youngest safety professional is so well done that's that's very impressive (laughs) and i suppose i suppose a good point to start maybe would be like i i'm i'm quite critical of our industry or i'm probably overly critical of our industry and 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 i think maybe there's a bit of history of us kind of not going far enough I think culture is a good example of that. We had a good chat about this before. Um, And I think culture is kind of like a rebranding of of behavior-based safety. Um, So as much as that's not specifically talking about youth, I suppose we can tie it into into why we think it does in the end. But I don't know what your opinion is on culture and behavior-based safety. Um, I think at the moment it's uh, quite a buzzword and there are a lot of companies or professionals that say that they're doing it the whole behavioral piece and culture piece but I think it's something that needs to be drilled down so much more and actually understanding what exactly it is rather than it just being a tick box exercise if that makes sense yeah yeah that's true I I think because it's so it's it's so big as well like the same as behavior based yeah it's massive there's just so much to look at and it, it's hard to quantify it. I've always found like, like they struggle with putting figures. Yeah, definitely. Well, you're probably the expert on this as opposed to me, but I always find working at height, we, you know, we struggle with that even now. Like it, and and you probably be able to have first hand knowledge knowledge of that. But when the kind of the new guidance came out, it pretty much shut the construction industry down and said, you know, can't use ladders. Uh-huh. Everyone got rid of ladders, and now. And now if I'm with the other way, it wasn't so long ago, I was in a property and 
and we had like this massive four page working at height risk assessment for the use of like steps that had like three steps and all they were doing was going up and turning off the the uh got a got the name the trip switch for the emergency right, right. Oh, just yeah. going on yeah. off and that was it once a month had a massive work in a high risk assessment mm -hmm. it's all or nothing isn't it, is it yeah what's that and like in construction i feel like that's well exactly and this is like part of the problem as well because we can go out and um a lot of the main the principal contractors will go out and they'll just ban step ladders but without giving anybody um, a solution so you know we're going out to electricians for example that are literally nipping up the ladders and changing the light bulbs say so you can't use them what are they going to use instead you know there needs to be for for us i feel like we're a supporting function and what we should do is rather than just saying no you can't do something you should be able to say well have you thought about doing it this way instead it's like the whole hop up um a step ladder access equipment type journey and uh, it is just it, if we're not careful by just having things as it yes you can or no you can't and um, again it just stops people from like being able to use the brain you know because it's just like a comfort blanket and then obviously if you do use something that you can't use and you're just going to get pulled up for it particularly on like a construction site but there's not enough support um, or supporting people out there to be able to then turn around to that subcontractor and say, no, you can't use step ladders on here, but what you can use is this instead. And I think if a few more people were a bit more like that, a bit more of an enabler, um, rather than a hazard spotter or a policeman, um, the industry as a whole would probably be far more better thought of, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. No, it does make sense massively. It's that it's that kind of like changing the tone of things as well, isn't it? Like instead of it's not saying no, you can't do that. It's like how can how can we do that? Being a bit yeah. more positive instead of negative. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Totally agree. Yeah, it's a it's a long journey though. I feel like um, you know we're kind of stuck in this kind of like perpetual cycle of like blame culture and things like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, agreed. But I do feel, um, again, I might just be having like a positive take on it, but I do feel like as an industry as a whole, there is a shift um, most recently as well. I felt it. I mean, certainly for me, coming up through a construction company, um, I, I came into to particularly the health and safety side of it because it did have such a negative preconception and I wanted to be a part of turning that into positive communications, making health and safety something that people think about in, in a good way. Um, and I do feel like that is happening. Mm. I don't know whether anybody else agrees with me, but it's definitely getting better. Maybe it's yeah. just my bubble, but, but it'd be interesting <laughs> to hear what other people think. <laughs> No, I think there is there is a kind of there's there's like this massive boom in the in the in, in business in in like um, positive mental attitude and things like that and everything's kind of the businesses as a whole seem to be changing the way they're talking about things. Um, and, and I was just at a conference the other day and that there, there was we had like a uh, kind of like a life life coach come in and it was all about like kind of positive mental attitude. So I think business as a whole is maybe changing their perception of things. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Totally agree. And I think that like the well-being joining into health and safety is having a positive impact on that as well. Like I said earlier, I do think that some people are doing it as a bit of a tick box exercise, like under the whole culture piece. Uh, but to be honest, even if it just changes one person's perception or it makes that one person feel better, it's still having a positive impact. Um, and I think it'll keep, we'll keep going on this journey, but having like young ambassadors or uh, you know, it doesn't necessarily need to be an old, a young ambassador, sorry, it could be anybody, as long as there are ambassadors who are positively relishing like the well-being, the whole culture piece then it will continue to drive it forward definitely definitely and I mean it's just uh, like I said we'll bring this back round to like to, to why it's kind of I suppose this podcast kind of sets out is what's wrong who's doing it and then what do we need and then I suppose yeah. what we need yeah. is, is youth just to kind of keep the listeners thinking I feel like these two are just going off on a tangent moaning um <laughs> Like I, I've said for a long time, like these kind of like um, 
the claims and the no wins, no fees, they, they, they kind of stick us in that kind of cycle where, so let's say, for example, I, I injure myself, I claim, and then an insurer just goes, I'm not going to go to court because it costs too much. We're just going to give them a couple of grand. Now, for me, two grand is like trip to Tenerife for two weeks. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Nice job. And then businesses go over the top because they're scared. They don't want to lose their premiums, go up again. And then they go over the top and people get a negative attitude of health and safety. And then they hurt themselves and then they claim again. And that we just end up in this cycle mm-hmm. of claims and over the top and negativity. And like you say, we need those people to just kind of break through the, the crap and just say, no, nah, we're going to just be positive here. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I listened to a really interesting interview of, um, with Tim Marsh the other day. And he was saying about, if you just focus on the mental health side and positive well-being and, and stuff like emotional well-being, everything else will fix itself. I thought that was really yeah. interesting. Yeah, that's a good point. I think you've nailed it as well on the on the whole blame culture, if you like. We we did seem to be at one point living in a world where we were becoming like the USA, you know, like rather than rather than people seeing it as a way to help each other. Like, for example, somebody I think had been administered first aid and, and that person had then gone on to sue them. Um, I can't remember the exact full story, um, but I, they'd injured them as part of the CPR or something. And I'm just thinking, what is going on? Uh, but like you say, until we break break away and somebody makes a stance somewhere that false claims and allegations and stuff like that will be investigated thoroughly rather than just being thrown out and yeah we'll pay for it um, we're always going to be in that situation where we're going to have health and safety as like an arse covering exercise which it's not about and until people see that that health and safety people are there uh, for everybody's benefit you know we're we're always going to be looked at and and unfortunately a bit, bit of a dull light with solicitors and with claims and with accidents and there is negative parts to the job role but then like you've just said if you concentrate on turning that into a positive thing and the well-being and and the mental health side of it then then things do then start to slot into place yeah i think that's a good point about that kind of first aid of it i was i've just done um an assignment on civil law and i was trying to make that case study and to see if that's true um because i've heard that one as well like years ago i was thinking yeah. cause I was going through it and I was thinking there's, there's a couple of defences in civil law around like, um, oh, I'm trying to remember that, like if the action you're doing was was to stop immediate danger or to stop someone dying or something like that. So in the case of first aid, I was like, well, surely they would use that defence. Yeah. So I was trying to find yeah. this case study and I couldn't yeah. find it. And and I think I think part to blame of this kind of, this, this culture that we're in is, is the media. You know, the kind of, you know, can't, you got to wear, you see it all over the BBC and CBeebies and stuff like that. They're all covered in PP or these poor kids trying yeah, to learn about yeah, science. Yeah, bonkers. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. I feel like, don't you think that um, if you ever, like, if you speak to somebody in, like, a pub or something, and particularly, like, I'd, you know, if you get, like, a, a typical, I'm just going to pick on, like, uh, I don't know, typical 60-year-old bloke sat in the pub and you get onto a conversation about health and safety, people always do that voice where it's, like, bloody health and safety. That's yeah. how people speak about it. Um, I, I, some guy was saying to me the other day that um, his kids uh, behind where they lived, um, they were they were trying to build like a new adventure playground or something, and and uh, the council had stopped it because if they fall off, they'd hurt themselves. And that's exactly the type of thing that we don't want to see in the press. Um, mm. Along with the whole bonkers conkers thing, where the school kids had been made to wear goggles, like full on goggles, to play conker to play conkers. Um, so yeah, you can imagine what came out of it. So. Um, yeah, the uh, there's a, a, a bit of a group that I've got together where basically the 30, 30 odd health and safety professionals, obviously yourself and myself are included in in this scheme called Safety for Good, which is trying to combat all of that. So if if anybody is listening, just log on to Safety for Good, have a little look at the website and what it is that we're trying to promote. Basically, it's to banish all of that, have health and safety in the press for a good reason for once, rather than a a negative news story. And we're going to do that by either um, giving a day's wage or 
given our time, either in a mentor, mentoring scheme um, or some kind of charitable donation. So Simon and the guys at Principal People, um, some of you may already have seen this and be watching the journey, but they've done the the uh, <laughs> the monkey bike ride, haven't they? From oh, uh, yeah, did you know? John Crows, <laughs> they're crazy. Yeah. They raise loads and loads of money um, for really great causes. And if you want to get involved in stuff like that, then uh, we're, we're always looking for, for new people to come on board. I'm an ambassador for the North. Um, and, yeah, it's a great way. If Again, it all ties in with this. If you are um, a youth looking to get into health and safety or construction or whatever it might be, the mentoring schemes will come into that because myself and Tim um, are going to join up as Anchor and Marsh. Sorry, we'll be hosting it. Um, and we're just going to give some of our time by doing some talks on uh, the, the well-being, mental health and career in construction and, and health and safety so log into that safety for good it'll be good good for that yeah it's 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 an unbelievable campaign and and actually i think i think it all stems from principal people and that if, if, you, if anyone follows them on linkedin like it looks like <laughs> an awesome place to work yeah, like it's like it right. such, such a positive i get the feel it's such a positive kind of environment and and I know I've quite a lot of deals in, um, with principal people. They've got me my last three helpful safety jobs. Um, last all three of concrete principal people. Just oh, wow. a, just by chance, the first time round, you know, just found a, a specific health and safety recruiter, and I thought, oh, great idea. And then and then I was like, oh, I'm I'm done here. I'm bored. What's what's next? And just got hold of principal people, and they were like, yeah, we'll sort you out. Um, and then I was up for redundancy and they got, and they sorted me out this time round as well. And, and each time, you know, even if the job wasn't, wasn't 100% right, it was, it was something positive to take out of it. And, and they're always willing to help and they're just lovely people. And then when I found out Simon was trying to do this to kind of leave a legacy, um, and I was like, wow, what a great idea. I was a little bit annoyed because about two weeks before I'd had said to my wife, I've got this idea about doing some kind of safety stuff for local charities, just for free of charge to try and change the, the mindset. I don't know, like, you know, doing safety for a good reason. And then about a week yeah. later, I saw safety for good on LinkedIn. I was like, are you joking? Yeah. Are you actually joking? <laughs> good, yeah, yeah. Like, what's the chances of that? Like, nearly had the same name and everything. I was like, you yeah, cheeky like... boy. <laughs> yeah, I thought you were just going to swear then, James. Like, no, no, no. <laughs> not, not my interviews. <laughs> Yeah. I, I, I did get moaned at this morning because I did a Kosh podcast that just come out on Monday this week. And, and I, I'm not going to lie, don't like Kosh. I just never got on with it. I, I just, it just annoys me. And, um, How did Kosh annoy you? <laughs> it just annoys me. I did from what a lot of stuff annoy me, but it, it just annoys me. And, and I've never really worked with like proper Kosh, if that makes sense. It's always been like little nitty gritty yeah. stuff like yeah. Right, yeah. a cosh assessment for bleach, and it's like oh, whatever. Come on, like we all know, don't drink bleach. So I'm not doing that. Um, oh, so I suppose, I suppose that's why that that's why I don't like it. So I thought I'd do this podcast anyway. I didn't realise that I probably swore quite a lot more than what I normally do. <laughs> you hate um, cosh is that much? Exactly, it just come out with me. And Christian, who was our first um, interviewee on the podcast. He he tagged me on LinkedIn saying, God, how many F bonds, James? And I was like, I'm just being true to myself. <laughs> being true to myself. <laughs> but Imagine I do... the people that have to do it out on site and then they get people like us telling them that their assessments aren't up to scratch or they've not yeah. got proper protective measures in place. They probably mm. hate Kosh even more than you do, James. I bet they do. That is a very good point. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I suppose now, now we've kind of covered what's wrong with health and safety. I suppose it's worth having a chat about like the current demographic of, of health and safety. And I suppose before before actually getting into some stats, like I suppose personally for me, um, I'm always the youngest in the room. And they're always white old men. Like it's like old white man's club. And and that, and that, you know. And I mean, no disrespect to those people that are in the industry because they've got us to a great position. You know, let, let's not do it a disjustice. We've we had the health and safety at work act where we had you know hundreds of, of fatalities on a regular basis, thousands even, 
And now we're in a place where we're getting 134, I think it was last year, something like that, in a year. And that is good. But, come on, let's get a bit more oh, diversity. Wow. <laughs> Yeah, agreed. Um, and again, it's, you know, through yourself, like these podcasts and events that we're able to have that platform to try and shout more about health and safety. It's just the, the boundaries, I believe, in health and safety are just endless now. Like the technology side of things, um, there's just so much more to it. With the well-being, the softer skills um, that, that people are trying to promote now, uh, rather than, you know, rather than having that authoritarian role the clipboard role people probably don't see it as that because it, you're right when you say majority of if you went to a conference or something like that then majority of the room would be white middle-aged male and and, and like you um i'm not saying that's a negative thing because um obviously the the stats are starting to come down so we're obviously doing something right um, and we can't take away uh, skills and experience from those types of people. But what we do need to start seeing is the younger profession spending more and more time with these people who inevitably are going to be retiring soon anyway. So for, for the likes of myself, you know, if I could spend the next five or ten years with somebody who's got these heaps of experience and has been there, done that, got the T-shirt, you know, it's only going to pass it down to me, who is the next like yourself you know the next future leader um so yeah we do need to create a bit more diversity in the role but how do you suggest that we go about it i think the safety for good's a good start i, I like their mentoring idea i think that's a, that's a very good start mm-hmm. um recently I, I i went to a local school um and did it go as well as it was to talk about a career in health and safety did it go as well as i wanted it to go it was it was a little bit last minute i emailed a load of schools and they said yeah can you come on thursday and i was like uh okay yeah i'll come on thursday uh, so it probably wasn't as good as i thought but actually the kid the kids were like well i don't want to call them kids they're like young adults really yeah. you know just having good conversations with them and to the point where one of them i even i even said you know what's your opinion of health and safety and one of them was like oh it's up to not sir first time i've been called sir i was like yes <laughs> get it he used to this. call me sir all day um i was like oh it's, it's nuts sir like i went to um what did he say he went to butlins and they had in the shower two signs one said warning hot water and one said warning uh slippery surface and he was like oh no shit. and i was like <laughs> Oh, yes, God. mate. I was like, do you want a job? <laughs> and you know, I think we need those kind of like common sense, ballsy attitudes. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Know. But we need people who are going to look at things a bit differently as well, because, you know, it's it's great having having people in place that have done the same thing all, all their life. You know, this is the way we've always done it type thing. But without having having different views um on things people don't get different takes on anything so we'll just carry on doing things exactly the same way when there might be different ways of doing things um and it's great that that now some businesses certainly the one that i'm in now it gives us the opportunity as long as we're legally compliant we we're not we don't have to be so dead set on doing it the way that we've already always done it give people the opportunity to trial new things work with suppliers look at things differently um, but we need those people who have got that eye for that you know to to be brought into to the profession but it's just how do you know how do we get them in and like say mentor mentorship schemes are brilliant school visits are great um we're doing one in a couple of weeks where we've got some students from um from a university coming onto one of our sites and for the first time like ever uh, we're not just going to be doing the construction role or the pm role or the design role we're actually going to be doing a presentation on health and safety and what it's like to have a career in in health and safety so i would encourage people if they do get the opportunity when your businesses or even if yourself are doing it um, bringing people onto construction sites and talking about careers and career fairs and stuff like that 
get health and safety on the agenda and uh, I don't know set them a task set them a technology task or whatever it might be to get people interested in it um, is definitely the way forward because again if we have 10 students and one of them sheds a bit of an interest that's one more person interested in health and safety than there was yesterday um, and yeah even in construction but yeah, it's great if people have got live construction sites or health and safety projects that they can spare time to show people round on, then then do it. You know, as as long as everybody's safe, there's no harm. I don't think in doing that. No, I agree, one hundred percent. I think as well, we we've got a challenge on on us as health and safety existing health and safety professionals to, in in my opinion, to show that it is one of the most diverse roles in a business i think it's oh, one of yeah. few roles yeah you know everyone and you have to know every single department you have to know the finance guy you have to know you know the, the people on the shop floor you have to know absolutely everything that's going on to understand all the constraints and and i, I remember an old boss of mine saying like or oh, we were in quality environment health and safety at the time he said oh, if nobody likes you you're doing a great job and i was mm. like nah that is yeah. very upset and now it's like if everybody likes me i'm doing a great job yeah exactly some people have said like oh the health and safety role it's so isolated you work in a silo you just work on your own and you travel around and you throw in a few grenades and you just leave basically but if that is the way that you feel and you're doing it right like that then no you're not that is not right i'm completely the opposite and i do i know every single person um and that makes me happy and it is more of a um a people role and i think it's leaning more towards that with with the well-being side of things as well um obviously there's a there's a huge part of it i don't want to to go so much down the well-being route that we forget about safety because ultimately um it's there for a reason um and whether people like it or not (laughs) the health and safety person um does is a superhero in my opinion because they do make differences to people's lives even if it's subtly and nobody else appreciates it they do and they're out there for a reason and the good ones are are very um selfless um and they do a great job for for people constantly Mm, you're right it can it it can be i think even if you do a good job it can be a quite a lonely job sometimes and and it is a job where the good is je- is is expected because if you do a good job as a health and safety professional, nothing happens, mm-hmm. and everybody goes home and the, and the business keeps doing what the business does in theory. Well, yeah, and um, and it can be if you're kind of like that kind of maybe not consult well consultant role as well, but like multiple sites as well. It can be lonely work from home in the car all the time. You you, you get little relationships with people, you know, Bob in this oh, side. I feel like we've got a new campaign here. Should we do give the health and safety person a hug day? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe that's a good day. I could do him a hug. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I do think it they get a bad rap and I and I give and I'm probably one hundred percent at fault there. I give my own profession a very bad rap. I moan about us, us a lot. But we do provide an awesome service. Like, you know, we are keeping people safe at work. You know, that is it's gotta be a it's gotta be a human right, surely. And it is an amazing <laughs> job. Yeah. It is good. I find it very rewarding anyway. I feel like job satisfaction is key. And when you go home feeling that sense of achievement, it is it is a good feeling. Yeah. And then it, it, sometimes it gets like 10 X in, in some of the industries as well, prevent, depend, depending on what service you're providing. So, you know, I'm working in housing at the moment. So part of it is making sure everyone's safe doing the job that they do. But the other part of it is... Um, is providing safe homes for people and we're in the social housing sector so it's like some of these people are like might be on the streets or you know they really can't afford a home and actually we're trying to provide a hotel at home kind of environment and to me that's it's it's double it's doubled down on that kind of moral side of it where i'm like oh i'm making sure my staff are safe but i'm also helping provide a safe home for somebody to live in so yeah, yeah. You, you know, and I previously worked in the NHS and that was the same, you know, I was, I was trying to make sure that our hospitals were safe for our patients, but also for our nurses to provide, and doctors and surgeons to provide an awesome life-saving service. So mm. just a role that's just got so many arms and legs, yeah. you can just yeah. do an awesome job. Yeah, exactly. 
And I suppose, I suppose we have just kind of, kind of got, and that was a really good discussion, I think. But like, to to bring it back to like boring numbers, like there's a couple of surveys which I think are worth saying. Like in America, their Society of uh, Safety Engineers average age was 54. Um, in the UK, the average age was 45 to 54. 75 mm-hmm. percent of them were, were male. Um, so I think it's pretty clear that we do need that kind of, you know, that big kind of drive, and hopefully there's. There's one, there's one young woman listening to this going, do you know what? Yeah, I'm going to be a health and safety professional. That'd be amazing. And one young man and everyone just to do it. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And hopefully that, you know, this, this kind of communication, people can see that we are human. We are normal. If anybody has any queries or want to know a little bit more about what it's actually like, or, you know, even want to come onto site, just give us a shout and we can make it happen. It's easy enough to answer a question, you know, the, 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 the uh, only stupid question is the one that you didn't ask, I always say. Yeah, yeah, that's a great point. That's a great point. It's not even, it is, it is a difficult career to, to kind of, to go on to, but I, I, I found it, so it's not a hard career to get your foot in the door. Um, I mean, from, for me, I literally just got a by chance job um, as an as a admin support in the quality environment health and safety department. Um, and then that was it. I just kind of worked hard and went up from there. And, you know, I didn't go to university. Um, I've literally just done all the courses at home and two weeks here and, you know, six months here and two months there, building up that kind of knowledge and becoming a generalist and then and then deciding that kind of like training or fire were my two focuses and then doubling down on them. Um, so I, I always find as much as it's hard work and it is hard to become good in this this industry, I, I find compared to others, it's, it's probably easier to get your foot in the door at the moment. Would you would you say that's right? Or? Yeah, I think so. Um, I had a bit of a similar journey to you, to be honest. I, I kind of just started off at a construction company and there was an opening in uh, the compliance team. So it was like an admin support role that I started off with. Uh, luckily for me the the company was um, quite good with training so I did all my training and and then backed it up with on-site experience Um, never went to university either like yourself just worked hard um, and challenged myself every day to make a difference and I think as long as you've got that quality about you as a person I think that you'll get really far in in this role as well to be honest Um, and shed a little bit of passion um, and most companies are looking for people like that. So I feel like it's, you, you could quite easily go go down that route if you so wish. Yeah, I, I think that's a great point. I've, I, one kind of challenge I've had with not going to university, I don't know whether you've had the, the same thing, um, was, was actually getting interviews. Um, I always found that, and I'm quite proud of this, but every health and safety interview I've had bar one, um, I've got the job. Um, right. But I struggle to get interviews. I right. struggle to get interviews. Uh-huh. Um, I think they just look at it and they go, has it got a degree? Yeah, got got it. It. yeah. yeah there is that. Um, for me, not so, because like I said, I worked my way up through a company and then I kind of just needed to get away and brand myself. Um, I was lucky in the fact that um, I was approached by another company, um, but my challenge was slightly different. My challenge was shaking off um, the the rage off reception, because uh, I first initially joined as reception um in this construction company and like I say there was an opening um through the compliance team did did the admin work my way up so for those people that I was out visiting out and about on site they were they were like oh you know recognize you um so I felt like I had to um like say go away and and brand myself um and that's the way that I've kind of done it to be honest and I feel like Although soft skills, the enabling, the support function, they're all great stuff to have, I do still feel that you do need to have that badge, um, and whether it's me bosh or whether it's your diploma, whatever it might be, I do still feel that, that um, that's needed. Um, if I don't know whether you would, you would agree or not, but maybe that would help people if they were trying to or struggling to get interviews. Um, there's the whole thing around the whole chartership around IOSH. Um, does that really help? Who knows? I don't know. Yeah, I, I have a, a, as you've probably picked up being a listener to the podcast, I have an opinion on everything. Um, <laughs> 
I, ha I do have an opinion on some of it. I think the the knee boshes, the knee boshes, the way I describe it is, it's kind of like driving. You know, you you pass your test and then you learn to drive, kind of thing. It's the yeah. basic. Yeah, the that. basic. yeah, that's a good way of putting it. Uh, so you know, like the knee boshes. This is where your clutch is. This is what the clutch does. This is where your gears are. Blah blah blah. Um, and then, I, so I got my knee bosh general and I got my knee bosh fire. And then in between that, I did, I did a lot of little courses on on little snapshot things like two days here, a week here, whatever. Um, and I actually didn't do the diploma for a, for a long time. And actually, I'm only I'm only halfway through it now. Um, and, and when I was up for redundancy in my last career, my last um, workplace, I felt personally I was ready for that kind of step up to that kind of manager role, a yeah. more senior kind of consultant or senior manager role. But I couldn't get those interviews because I didn't have that diploma and it was that right. same thing. Uh, yeah. So I, I think they have a place. Um, I think Nibosh, like you say, like I've just said, you know, it's that kind of learn to drive scenario. However, not endorsed by NCRQ whatsoever, but I'm halfway through that, the diploma, and I'm massively impressed with the yeah. way they do things. Yeah. And they're getting a lot of good rap. And yeah, they, they heard that, yeah. And they've overtaken Nibosh last year. I think they overtook them as the most popular, which is just outstanding. Yeah, that's great news, isn't it, for all, especially people like myself, you know, are, uh, I'm not particularly academic, really. Like, that would have been a brilliant route for me to go down if it was available at the time. But I've heard, actually, that, yeah, it's getting really good press. So it might be an idea for people, um, if you are looking, what's your route? Check it out, definitely. Yeah, and, and there are other routes as well. I know a couple of colleagues have done the MVQ route, um, and they've found that quite um, quite simple as well. I've heard some bad stuff around the MVQ route as well that... And I've not, I've not done it, so I couldn't really comment. But the, I've heard people say, if you work for a good business, you can just kind of copy what they do and send it off to your assessor and then it's done. Um, I do think the NCRQ, in my opinion, is that good combination between hard work because the assignments are bloody hard. Yeah. Uh, you need that self-drive. You need that mm -hmm. self-motivation, which I think you do need in our career anyway. Yeah. You need that kind of self-motivation sometimes to to just go and find not a problem but find an area to improve like continual improvement mm -hmm. so i think it helps from that point of view um yeah. i liked what you were saying about that rate of reception kind of brand mm -hmm. yourself I, I like that i i always found i always got that brand of um young lad with a degree you know once mm -hmm. i got into the, the offices and stuff like that and working in the management team it was that young lad with a degree and they'd be like oh James, I can't do that because I haven't got a degree, and I've got, I ain't got a degree. Yeah, I had to rebrand myself as that kind of that kind of. No, I'm just the same as you. I'm just yeah, you know, someone that's just worked hard to get where I wanted to get. Yeah, yeah, there is there is a lot of that, and to be honest, I don't think that's just in our role. I think that we will find that in quite a lot of places, but particularly this one more so. Yeah, I just think like I don't know about like other challenges that, that you kind of found in the um in the industry, but like like we said earlier, it can be quite lonely, not just in the role, but outside of the role. Like none of my friends are health and safety professionals other than people that I know because they are health and safety professionals, if that makes sense. Like, but, but my friends like all have a negative attitude for, of health and safety. And I can't really come home and talk about health and safety or go to the pub and talk about my role. Yeah, completely understand. Um, yeah, it's funny. M my partner is completely the opposite of me. Um, so he um, owns a concrete pumping company where that that is definitely the way that health and safety people are thought of and spoke about. So it's quite interesting sometimes some of the conversations that we have at home. Um, but yeah, no, nobody really understands what it is that we do. Um, other than that, what you know, what you've just said. Um, but to be honest, I'll just keep beating the drum about it. <laughs> I'll probably do everyone's head in. But um, the more of us that can spread that positive message around, um, the the better. Just keep doing what you're doing. It's really. Uh, to be fair, I think the, my my two kind of closest friends have, have both said since that they both listened to the podcast, which is a great start. Um, God, that's brilliant. Yeah, yeah See, that, really you're making a difference. And they both said, you know, I find it really interesting. And that, that's awesome to hear that they're finding, you know, something that I'm putting my time in interest in. But actually, an industry like this, it's awesome that they're finding it in interesting. Yeah, definitely.
Yeah, I've got to the point now where um, a couple of my friends at first of all, they were like, why would you want to be in health and safety? Now they actually ring me for uh, bits of advice and stuff like that. So we're getting there, we're getting there. We're still not we're not in love with it yet, but they, uh, they will be. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was like, I think it's just kind of, it's unseen, isn't it? And Yeah, no, I get it. That's People have their own personal little journeys and... Uh, and that's good and you know we keep going back to this thing but even if you make a difference to just one person it's still a difference isn't it yeah yeah that, that's a good point and you know what that that that's probably the, one of the biggest things for me in this career is that kind of that one person coming over and saying you know you made my job easier yeah and it, it's big, it's it's nice to be working in fire in housing at the moment because there's a, there's a lot of fear yeah. around it and i love just going into a housing manager or something like that and saying calm down it's not as scary as you think. Mm-hmm. And that, yeah. that's a role that I think that not a lot of other careers would be able to do. You yeah. know, it's that kind of coming along and just saying, you can do this yourself, mm-hmm. you know, and I'm going to help you do that. And I'm here if you're still not sure. And yeah. that's, a, that's an awesome thing to be able to do. Definitely. That's a good message to say to people. And yeah, there's just so much we could go through. I mean, per- personally, I think being a health and safety professional has kind of helped me in 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 life in general if that kind of makes sense it's kind of the way the way kind of looking at things like continual improvement always trying to continue to improve myself um I, I think it's like that kind of plan do check act model which is like the basis of a lot of like management systems in health and safety that's pr- pretty much how i just do everything in life now mm-hmm. yeah 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 so you're not just making a difference to like yourself but also to other people as well um I might say it's unseen, isn't it? But but we know, but, you know, that what we're doing, and it does take um, a caring person, I think, to to do that as well. Um, so yeah, no, I completely agree with you. Mm. What do you think? What do you think young people would bring to the industry if they if if they if let's say tomorrow there was just everyone listened to this podcast, and then all of a sudden there's fifty new intakes on on knee mm-hmm. Bosch general certificates tomorrow what mm-hmm. how would that change in your opinion and i'm talking oh, completely new eyes different mm. ways of looking at things um you know innovation it's all out there up for grabs um technology like i said before is coming into it that's a massive a massive thing at the moment um but it's not just like the safety side of it so i know we touched on working at height that's like one tiny little drop in a whole range of everything people could um have different ways of like looking after people's health um dust mitigation um can we be more proactive in our approach to well-being and mental health and i know that it's um it's great that we've got like so many mental health first aiders out there at the moment but maybe um somebody new coming in into the industry might have something so preventative that that they actually uh, are ironing out all of these creases before we get to the point where we need mental health first aiders you know spotting the signs and stuff like that's great but can we can we even get rid of the signs? Can we do more and more things so far up front that like you and I haven't thought of or someone's been doing the job for five years or 10 years or 20 years hasn't even thought of? Um, I'm, I'm out there at the moment meeting some great people with some great innovations um, and those people should really, if, you, if you're a talented, really clever individual, um with with new ideas and ways of doing stuff you might just drive past the building site and think why are do, why are they doing that you might not be so that way you might be more, more of a practical like a hands-on approach but think god i could do that better myself it's just about having the people that are willing to come forward um and uh, and I guess it goes back to like what you said with the fire stuff. People are so scared of of it at the moment um, that we're towing the line. And we need um, almost like this is going to sound really, really strange because you think like health and safety are there to, to put the rules in place. But we almost need rule breakers, if that makes yeah. sense, to challenge mm. it. Um, and to just think outside the box. So I think, in answer to your question, if we had 50 new startups tomorrow, 
um, those people would bring fresh innovation to um, what is a, a very steady pace, the construction industry at the moment, the health and safety industry. Yeah, I, lo- I love that rule break. As I've been thinking about for a while, how can how can we kind of challenge listeners or businesses out there to just just kind of break the rules in safety? Because if you're breaking the rules in safety, you're, in in their opinion, you're breaking the law and putting your employees at risk. So mm-hmm. how, how can you do that? And I always find like I was thinking a while, like how can I do that? How can I kind of challenge people? And I was th- thinking like if it is, if you were to go back to your business and just remove one procedure, one piece of documentation there that's telling people how to do something, find one and get rid of it. Yeah, yeah. Just get rid of it. Don't do, yeah. don't do anything else. Just get rid of the piece of paper. Because I'll, I'll, I'll think back to one of my, my, my first job in health and safety, and we had an incident. I can't remember what it was, but it basically came down to the piece of equipment was, was not very good. And we ended up, I ended up developing a form to check those pieces of equipment Mm -hmm. and then about six months later there was just health and safety paperwork everywhere and i set myself a challenge to just reduce the paperwork and i found this piece of this this form that i'd i'd created and printed out loads for the engineers and i put it in there and it was covered in dust Mm -hmm. i don't think Mm -hmm. one had been done and i was just like we get rid of it just get rid of it get rid of it cut it out yeah just get rid of it yeah so that's you can great. do that tomorrow, Rachel, and you can message me on LinkedIn or something. Yeah. Oh, I do that every day, every day. We're in a fortunate position here. Um, for, for those people that don't know, um, I, I'm kind of working, uh, so like I say, in the construction industry, but for a property developer um, who have just set up a, a brand new arm of the business, which is a construction business um so hand selected people out of the industry have got together um, and set up this new construction arm and um, so we're self-delivering our own build projects and it's like refreshing we've got a clean slate in front of us so i'm fortunate enough in the fact that i can do this and i will take this because this is for me i, I love this kind of challenge but Obviously, health and safety uh, processes, procedures, policies and stuff like that, uh, ordinarily probably across other businesses, um, uh, they're already there. They're already set in place. But if we think about it, we've started from nothing. So I've got the beauty of being able to, to take a procedure um, and I'll go and sit down with um, our construction manager, for example, who's got probably 30 odd years experience on me. And I'll say to him, does this actually even work? Um, and he's like, no, we've not done that since, you know, I don't know, for, for like five years. The access I'm talking about, obviously not the bones of the of the procedure, um, but those things like you spoke about before, there's been an accident, there's been a reactive measure, there's been this, there's been that. Somebody was nervous, so they added in a whole load more control measures that in actual fact are more obstructive to the job. We just take all of that out, you know, if it's not needed, why overcomplicate things? But the most important message there is have the people on the ground that are actually running with those procedures who are actually day to day doing them and get their buy in, get their input from it. And then you've got yourself there um, a procedure that's been made by the workforce for the workforce um, so again challenge people to do that go go to to your employer and say is this the right way can i just take this and um go away and and uh, have a you know use it as a as a bit of a case study almost and take it and make it better and that's what we do mm, yeah it's that kind of like, and that that's what I think. If we had that kind of 50, 50 you know, young people started tomorrow in the industry, that they just kind of bring that fresh eyes, like you say. You know, I've said for a long time, like diversity of people brings diversity of solutions. Like yeah. different cultures do things different ways, and that one will have an amazing way. So I would, I always use um, a video in my manual handling training of a of a young man um, in an eastern um, kind of country that's stacking bricks on his head right so you know how to carry everything on the head and the, the amount of bricks this kid puts on his head is unbelievable uh-huh. and it's like throwing them up it's, it's just throwing them up. and i just say is this good or bad manual handling and everyone goes ah it's terrible that's really bad that's really bad and so why is it bad 
no one could ever answer the question. I said, what are the fundamentals of good manual handling? It's keeping your back in that natural curvature, that straight back, as we would say. So keeping up that straight back. And we say, don't bend. Well, this kid's not bending. He's throwing these bricks onto the top of his onto the top of his head. Yeah, but the pressure on his neck. Yeah, okay, fair enough. That's a fair point. But we're, the way we're lifting, we're putting pressure on, on our lower back. So we've still the same amount of pressure, but we're lifting in different ways. So who's right and who's wrong? Mm -hmm. So exactly. it's that kind of yeah. different culture, that different diversity bring to different ways to do things. Yeah, totally agree with you. I mean, there's just so much we could go on about this kind of thing, but that's kind of why oh, your PIRs kicked in. <laughs> I've not moved for so long because I've been so engrossed in the car. Oh, it's back. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> That, that kind of like doing the same thing you know that I, I, and i know before anyone goes crazy that this is not the actual definition of insanity this is like a so-called definition of insanity but like doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results i feel like that's where we are at the minute yeah and the same thing same risk assessment same policies same procedures you know let's like you say step back fresh eyes um we're desperate for that i think yeah if people take something from this podcast today then i'd hope that um, the message would be that you don't have to be this typical hazard spotting police policing role um, with heaps and heaps and heaps of, of information about legislation, regulations and stuff like that, because what the industry is crying out for is exactly that, what you've just said, fresh pair of eyes, diversity, different ways of looking at things. So if that person is you um, or you think you could bring something new to the table, then get into it. If it's if that's what you want to do, get into it. Um, it's not dull. It's not boring. Um, it can be thought of as that, but it's certainly in my experience and hopefully yours, James, as well. It's not that at all i always find it funny if you google health and safety professional mm. the, the, like the first, <laughs> the picture, first image like, that comes up <laughs> it's embarrassing always yeah. got a clipboard always got hard hat yeah. high vis everyone's going back and it, googling it now like health and safety professional yeah it's embarrassing and i tell you what i probably wear ppe the least amount of anyone in the business and it really <laughs> annoys me that that's what they think we look like <laughs> Exactly. Yes. I don't own a clipboard. I don't think I've ever used one, to be honest. I, I tell you what, I did get given one. Um, I started a business and we did a lot of audits. And they said, oh, you'll need this. And I went, I won't be caught dead carrying that. No, definitely not. I, I am not encouraging that that perception, that misperception, <laughs> I suppose, is a better way to say it. Yeah, yeah, definitely not. I don't think I've done an audit on a, um, on a piece of paper for probably eight nine ten years i don't think we've got phones ipads tablets computers. Yeah. Do you know what i mean it's not like that at all is it uh it's like you were saying earlier about technology you know there's better ways to do this isn't there mm -hmm. yeah definitely so hey. yeah yeah, it's a journey and it's definitely going places and if you want to be part of that journey then now's a good time to join health and safety i agree i think it is I think it is. So if you were to give in 10 seconds those 50 people that start in the health and safety tomorrow a bit of advice in 10 seconds, what would it be? Um, oh, my gosh, you just put me on the spot there. <laughs> um, definitely challenge yourself, push yourself, believe in yourself. Um, the industry needs like so many different characters out there. So if you feel like you could make a difference and you're a caring person and you do want to make a difference because that's what you will be doing, then this is exactly the right time in the right sector. Um, help is available out there. There's tons of different routes um, and ways to go down to get into health and safety, to get qualified. Ask the question. Again, loads of people out there to help. And I know that was more than 10 seconds, but I could keep going on and on about it all day. That was really good. Thank you very much. What about your 10 seconds, James? Wow, well, no, I'm the host. I don't get challenged. <laughs> you got out of that one. <laughs> my, my, if I was going to give any advice, I would say, oh, what would I say? Oh, no, I'm, I've never been put on the spot. <laughs> That's so difficult on the spot. I, I would say, I would say challenge everything. 100% challenge yeah. everything. Yeah. Somebody says, you need a risk assessment for that. Say why. Mm -hmm. Take why all the time. That, yeah. that would be my yeah. one piece of advice. Why, why, why? That I've literally just done that for eight years. Mm -hmm. um, why, why, why? And it probably pisses people off massively, but 
I enjoy it. I mean, embrace being a pain in the ass and just be a nice person, but be a pain in the ass as well. Yeah, good. I agree. Right, Rachel, thank you very much for coming yeah, on the thanks podcast. Thanks for having me. Okay, guys, I hope you enjoyed that. Rachel really brings that kind of positive um, perspective on safety and um, she kind of fits in with the tone of the podcast. I probably think we'll have her back at some point. I hope you enjoyed that. If you got some value out of that, make sure you click like and subscribe and the bell if you're on YouTube. If you listen on iTunes, don't forget to give us a rate and a review. We really, really, really appreciate that. And don't forget to share this episode because I know you're embarrassed you're listening to a health and safety podcast, but it's good, right? Let's get the message out there, people. I'm watching. Share the podcast. Peace out. Safe.